Well, good evening, everyone. Pray that you all are doing well and have a, had a wonderful afternoon. So good to see you back in the house of the Lord uh, this evening. Aren't we thankful for how God met with us this morning? And thankful for that and looking forward to what God has in store for us this evening. Just by way of announcements, we will have business conference following the evening service. So members heed to that. Uh, messengers, Thursday, October the 24th, Pope Baptist Association Fall Meeting at Green River Baptist Church at 7 o'clock. So if you'd like to be a part of that meeting, you can go there that evening. Uh, opportunities for you to give for the month of October. Our ministry of the month is uh, going to be giving to our church here to provide hot meals for our community. Uh, we found out uh, these past couple weeks the need um, in our community for those uh, for those meals to be provided. Uh, so many people have taken advantage of those and we know uh, that due to power outages a lot of folks lost the food in their refrigerators and in their freezers and uh, a lot of people are hurting at this very moment and sometimes just in your time of grief and trouble a good hot meal just does good for the soul. So we do want to provide that for folks. So um, you We'll continue to provide those, but that's that's the object of your giving for for this month. So every penny that you give uh, will go to that and to help provide hot meals for the folks here in our community. For Operation Christmas Child, shoebox items for October, they ask that you donate stuffed animals and small toys, and we appreciate everybody giving to that throughout the year. Well, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Ask Him to bless our time together tonight. We don't want to go to church without Him, amen? Uh, we want God to meet with us tonight in a special way. So you pray where you are. Let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Brother John O'Dell, would you pray for us, brother? Thank you, Father. 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 Thank
Turn in your book to page 374 in the church hymnal. Press on. It won't be very long. Amen. Give him praise. <clears throat>
And all God's people said, amen. Love that hymn, how beautiful heaven must be. You know the most beautiful part of it, don't you? The Lord Jesus Christ himself. That is the beauty of heaven, getting to see our blessed Redeemer and Savior face to face. If you have your Bibles tonight, turn with me to Romans chapter 1. We're going to finish the chapter tonight. Romans chapter 1, and we'll... Begin reading in verse 29. We'll read through the end of the chapter, verse 32, as we continue studying through uh, the epistle of Romans together. Romans chapter 1, and verses 29 through 32 this evening. Romans chapter 1, we'll begin reading in verse 29. I'll ask you if you found your place, and will and Abel would stand reverence of the reading of the Word of God. The Bible says this in Romans chapter 1, beginning in verse 29. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, Murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to come to your house and to worship you because you alone are worthy to be worshipped. Father, we thank you for everyone that's made their way out tonight. Father, we pray for the ones that could not be here for whatever reason. Would you bless them as well tonight? Father, we again thank you for the prayers that have been prayed, songs that have been sung. We say thank you for your pure, infallible word. And Father, as we look again to this text tonight, and I stand beside, behind this sacred desk, God, I pray that you'd cleanse and empty me of self and sin. I pray that you'd hide me behind the cross and use me as a vessel. I'm in need of a touch from you tonight. So God, I pray that you'd grant it. God, I pray that everyone under the sound of my voice would see all of you and none of me. God, would you do what needs to be done in this place here tonight? Would you do what only you can do? And we'll give you all praise, honor, and glory for it all because you alone are worthy. And it's in the name of Jesus that we pray and all God's people say it. Amen. Thank you so much for standing. You may be seated. Once again this evening, we are here in the epistle of Romans, and we know that the writer under Holy Ghost inspiration is the Apostle Paul. Paul was, would have written this sometime between A.D. 57 and A.D. 60, and the 
congregation that he is writing this to, the audience that he is writing it to, is the Christians that are in Rome. The last time that we were together here looking through the epistle of Romans, we were in Romans 1 and verses 26 through 28. We were studying concerning the result of Gentile world apostasy. What you will find is three times here in this chapter, you'll find the phrase, God gave them up. Why well, you'll see in verse 24 where the Bible says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. You'll see it again in verse 26. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. In verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. What we find in verse 28, I like what John Phillips said, you'll find a mental perversion. A mental perversion there in verse 28. And as we begin to look at our text tonight and to dive into the exposition, we must look at the beginning of verse 29. The Bible says this, Being filled with. Now we need to pause right there for just a moment. Again, nothing in your Bible is there by accident. It's all there for a purpose and for a meaning. And so when we study this list, and my, what a list of things that is, as we read it together tonight, here's what we're going to find. We have to find the beginning of verse 29 to be very, very important because it says being filled with. If you are filled with something, that means you have no room for anything else. If you are filled with something, it's as if you have been taken over by whatever you have filled yourself up with. Why, if you are filled, that means you took it in. There was an intake. <laughs> you indulged yourself and took it in. We learned a lot about being filled when it came to our gas tanks a couple weeks ago, did we not? <laughs> I learned a very valuable lesson uh, I'm, I'm one, this, and there are some people in this life that you ride around and your gas tank gets to halfway and you're stopping at a gas station. Doesn't matter what you're doing, you're stopping, you're filling it up. I just want to let you know that's my wife. My wife doesn't like to be that way. Uh, she likes to know that she's got plenty of gas in the car. Her father taught her from just as a young age. He said, just in case we ever have an emergency in the middle of the night, I don't want to have to stop for gas if we have to get somewhere. I want to be able to get in the car and go. So if, if she's ever running low on the way home, we're going to stop and get some gas. I am the fella that has the light on the dashboard. I am that guy. I like to test the limits. I like to ride on faith. and ride, I like to ride on the Fs, fumes and faith, all right? That's what I was doing a couple of weeks ago, and all of a sudden I realized that I did not need to do that. Uh, I hopped in my truck and decided to go down to exit 5, down to Campobello to try to fill my truck up. It said low, which meant I had 30 miles or less in my truck. With that being said, I went down there, and the moment I pulled into the parking lot, uh, they informed me that they were out of gas. At that very moment, I decided to try to get back home, and my, what a maze that was. As I had to turn around six, seven, eight times for trees in the road, and I'm sitting there praying the whole time, God, if you'll just let me get back to the house and let the hot spot open up right there in Landrum, that's about a mile or two from the house, so I can get there, I promise I'll put some gas in this thing. The Lord allowed me to get home, and from that point forward, it was a lot of late nights going to the Spinks in Gownsville because they were the only gas station that had power to go and fill up gas cans and to fill up my wife's car and I put a little bit of gas in my truck and was able to get down there and praise the Lord got in there and filled my truck up and my truck if it could talk at that very moment when it said 300 and something miles to empty and said we've never been this full before <laughs> probably had not been that full since I bought it but being filled we learned a valuable lesson did we not about having something full. How many of you, you go to a restaurant and you sit down and you order your sweet tea 
and you appreciate the waitress leaving that thing only a quarter of the way full for your entire meal. No, 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 that's, that's not good. We desire it to be full. We like to go and to be running on full. What we find here in verse 29, the Bible says concerning these apostate people, they are being filled with, meaning this, up to the brink. No room for anything else. They are filling up their life with the things on this list. But I want to talk, talk to you for just a moment about that the Christian is to be filled. We as born-again believers, we are called to be filled. Now, you can decide what you want to be filled with, but I'm going to go with what God said to be filled with. In Ephesians chapter 5, Paul writing to the church at Ephesus, in Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 15 through 18, the Bible says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. The Christian is to be filled. Ephesians chapter 3. In verses 17 through 19, Paul's still writing to the church at Ephesus. He said that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and the length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passeth knowledge that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Paul writing concerning this apostate generation, they're being filled, but the Christian is to be filled. I just want to encourage you with this tonight, friend. If, you're came, if you came in here tonight and your life spiritually is halfway or three-quarter or a quarter, or if you came in here tonight with your spiritual gaslight on, that's because of you. It's not because of Him. He is ready and available and He's got an abundant supply. I'm glad He's not going to run out, aren't you? The gas station a few weeks ago ran out, but I'm thankful my God never does. So if we're walking around and we're not living a filled up life, it's because we're not desiring to. But I want to warn you tonight that if you come and live your life and you only desire to be halfway full of God, you're leaving another half to be filled with something else. If you leave any bit of room in your life, the devil is going to try to take opportunity to put something in there to be filled up. What we see is these people are being filled with, meaning they are absolutely taken over. They have intake all of this. And my, what a list that we have. But the truth is simply this. You can look at this list from verses 29 through 31. Look at that list. <laughs> and know this tonight. You cannot be full of the Spirit and be full of that. It's impossible. It is impossible to be full of the Spirit and to be full of that. <laughs> it cannot be done because when something as big as God moves in to someone as small as I am, He's going to take over. <laughs> That's just who He is. He's not, there's nothing hidden from Him. He is taking over and with that being said, I'm as close to God as I desire to be. You're as close to God as you desire to be. You're as full as you desire to be. This apostate generation, they are desiring. It is a pleasure to them to be full with the things that are mentioned on this list. We could break this down and preach a few messages from just this list of wickedness 
that we see listed here in verses 29 through 31. But there's one thing that we must point out. Number one is this. Paul wrote it under Holy Ghost inspiration, meaning this. It was relevant in Paul's day. You see, a lot of us, we read this list and it sounds like our day that we're living in right now, does it not? Anybody want to disagree with me in the house of God tonight? I didn't think so. It sounds like our day, but I'm just here to tell you it was relevant in Paul's day. How much more relevant is it in our day? J. Vernon McGee, he wrote the series Through the Bible, a wonderful commentary. He put in there that he used to tell his Bible college students to do this when they would study and break down this list. Dr. McGee would take time to actually go through every single one of the things listed in this list and talk about it and teach upon it. And here's what he would tell his Bible students to do. He said, go get a daily newspaper and I want you to sit down and I want you to read all the headlines of the newspaper and read through all the articles and I want you to circle and find every single one of these things that you find in the list. And they could do it in a daily newspaper. It's relevant. It's prevalent in the day in which we are living. And I want to make a very sad statement to all of you here tonight. You read this list, the saddest thing that I could tell you tonight is you'll find most of this in Baptist churches. You'll find most of that list in Baptist churches. Most of that list people have compromised on and said, it's okay, we're just going to sweep it under the rug. It's okay, we're just going to overlook that because we want more members and we want this and we want that and we want to be known for having a big church. And That's the status symbol that we're desiring. Friend, I'm here to tell you, that list right there has no place, no place in the house of God being prevalent and relevant in God's house. It is, should not be found. Listen, people being filled with it. You know what that means? It's a common thing. It's a common thing. Being filled with this mess means that you're feasting on it every day single day. You know what that tells me? Because we find it in Baptist churches and it's becoming more and more popular in Baptist churches, that, goes, that takes me back to this morning. We don't have many true worshipers sitting in the pews because many are not worshiping in spirit and in truth and being full of the Spirit they're coming in full of this mess. In the name of religion, they're full of this mess. But I want to tell you, you'll definitely see it out there in that world in which we live. Because I want to let you know this, that world despises God. That world out there hates God. And they hate anything that God says. If God says it's right, they're going to go against it and say it's wrong. If God says it's wrong, they're going to go against it and say that it's right. You look at the world in which we live in today, and my, what a mess we're in when we see this list before our very eyes. My, what a list that it is. Professing Christians should have no fulfillment in that list right there. I didn't figure I'd get many amens on that. Professing Christians should find no fulfillment in that list. Hear me well. The devil loves to get Christians to slip up and fall. These children, these teenagers in here, listen to me. The devil would love nothing more than to ruin your life and to ruin your testimony. He'd love nothing more than to do that. And he could get you to trip up with some of the things that are mentioned right here in this list. By the way, God redeemed our soul. He didn't redeem our flesh. We're still battling this flesh until God calls us home and we lay down this earthly tabernacle. So I'm just here to tell you, you're going to wage war against the flesh daily. Daily in your life. 
And you're going to have to decide if you're going to let Jesus fill you up or if you're going to let the devil try to fill you up with the mess of the world. Friend, there is nothing like the Spirit-filled life. Nothing like it. But there are days, there are days, and I'm just going to be transparent with you, when the flesh, it just feels good to the flesh to be something like that. That's why we use the term in the South. I just had to get in my flesh for a minute. Because it felt good, felt pleasurable just for that moment. But for the true child of God, if they were to slip up and be a part of anything named here in this list, hear me well, you'll be miserable. You'll be miserable. Because the one who purchased you, those things will not be named of him. And you will be miserable in your life for Christ if you are indulging and being a part of anything like this. Notice verse 32. Who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but have pleasure in them that do them. Knowing the judgment of God. Meaning this, they know what God says about it. They know what He says. Going as far to say this, they know how God feels about it. Your parents ever talk to you about that? Pull you aside and say, let me tell you how I feel about this. And enlighten you for just a moment on maybe your behavior or the choices that you were going to be making. They know what God says. They know how God feels. But what do they do? They don't repent. No, rather being turned over to a reprobate mind, you know what they do? They flaunt it in God's face. It's like they wave it right in front of God's face and say, look at me. Look at this lifestyle that I have. Look at what I do. Look at what I do. What are you going to do to me now? What are you going to do to me now? Remember, when we started getting into this portion of the text, I reminded you that a lot of people know that God is love. And God is a God of love, amen? He is a God of grace. He's a God of mercy. But I want you to think for just a moment like God being a coin. That's one side. But there is another side. And He is a God of jealousy, wrath, and judgment. You cannot, you cannot take one side without the other. He is complete. He is holy. He is pure. He is who He is. And one of these days, the wrath of God and the judgment of God will be poured out on those who have flaunted this wicked lifestyle in front of His face. You ever thought about that? that nothing's hidden from Him. You see, those of us, we might see a little bit on the news. We might see a little bit in community. And we might see a little bit here or there. God sees it all. God sees it all. There's nothing hidden from Him. And they're flaunting it, just waving it right in His face. The Bible says that they practice these things having pleasure in them that do them. It is fulfilling for for them to do this list of things. This apostate generation, they practice in pleasure. Not only this, not only do they practice in pleasure, listen to me, they practice in promotion. You know what they want? They want everybody to know about it. Used to be things like that weren't paraded around. Now they do. They want everybody to know about it. They want everybody to see it. They want some people to get their feathers ruffled, but here's what they really want in that promotion. They want other people to join along with them. That's what they want. They're going to promote it. Not only this, they practice in pleasure, they practice in promotion, but they practice in perversion of another generation. 
It's not just, not just for them. They want to pervert another generation. Can I, can I get real topical for just a minute? And you answer this question in your mind. If you think I'm false in saying that they're not trying to pervert another generation, answer me this. Why are they putting drag queens in libraries reading books to kids? Why are they promoting that then? I'll tell you why. Because they want my kids. They want your kids. They want your grandkids. They want them to condone that lifestyle. What God says is an abomination. They want everybody to accept it and to go along with it and they want another generation to follow behind them and they want it to be more prominent in the next generation than it is in theirs. It ought to make us sick. <laughs> it's what it ought to do. These people that have been turned over to a reprobate mind. Have you ever, have you ever seen the pictures and the videos of Christians trying to witness at like a gay pride parade? Watch the face of that homosexual crowd. It turns into just a deep disdain and hate as they'll go bug-eyed and point and yell at those, in those Christians' faces. And friend, listen to me. I know we're in rural North Carolina. I know we're in the second smallest county in the state. I know a lot of people may not know where Mill Spring, North Carolina is. But I can promise you this, the devil knows where Mill Spring, North Carolina is. And I can tell you this. I'll use a quote from one of our deacons when he was talking about church shootings. And I'll apply it to this right here. It's coming soon to a town near you. Coming very soon. This prevalent, prevalent in our day. Can I ask you tonight? Do you see people being filled with unrighteousness? Do you see people being fulfilled by fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, being full of envy? I encourage you, turn on your television, watch the news, and see if they don't talk about them. I'll encourage you with this. You won't find a news channel that doesn't have something about murder on it tonight. It's all over. Debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God. You can pray in any name you want to in this world, but don't you pray in Jesus' name. They despise it. They cannot stand it. They absolutely hate it. Despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things. Disobedient to parents. Can I get an amen on that? No respect anymore. Completely disobedient. Without understanding. Covenant breakers. Without natural affection. Implacable. Unmerciful. My, what a list. But when you look at where we are today, when it comes to this, maybe you've got to ask this question. How would we get here? How would we get here? Number one, I've got to take you all the way back to the garden. Due to the fall of mankind in the Garden of Eden, that's how you get a list like that. Sin entered into the world. Death entered into the world. Didn't take very long for the first murder to happen, did it? Not very long at all. You get to Genesis chapter 6, God's done look down at the earth and sees the wickedness and the unrighteousness, and He says, I'm going to have to flood. I'm going to bring the judgment. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. You can see all throughout Scripture the wickedness, sinfulness of man. 
But maybe you're going to make it topical for the day and time in which we live. And this ought to break our hearts. How do we get to where we are today? We don't know what bathroom to use. Some people just can't figure it out. So much mess, so much trouble. You know what you got to do? You got to look back at a generation. A generation that didn't stand for biblical truth. Friend, I'm here to tell you today, it's not time to be quiet. It's time to stand up and let our voices be heard that we're not going to accept this mess. That we're not going to go along with this mess. We're not going to compromise on this mess. The Bible calls us to be a peculiar people, set apart for a purpose. Look around at your kids, your grandkids. You want to see a little bit of a different world in which they live in? You better get to share in Jesus. You better get to share in Jesus because I'm telling you, Jesus is the only hope for this. I'm going to step on some toes with this. Some of y'all, the biggest date on your calendar is in November. And you think if it goes the way you want it to go that it's going to fix everything. You are sadly mistaken. I wouldn't put faith and trust in any man. My hope and my trust is put in a thrice holy God. <laughs> so I'm telling you, you better get out there and shine your light for Christ. Because I can promise you this, Jesus is coming back. He is coming back. He has never failed to come through on a promise. He's promised to come back. Since he's never failed on a promise, I've got 100% faith, <laughs> hope, and trust. He's coming back. <laughs> and he's coming back for his church. And I pray that I'm alive when it happens. More specific than that, I pray that I'm standing smack dab in the middle of a cemetery when it happens. Because I just want to see the ground break open, those vaults give way. And let the dead in Christ rise first. Because when that day comes, listen to me, we're going to be out of this mess. We sang tonight how beautiful heaven must be. The most beautiful part, we've all agreed here tonight, is seeing our blessed Redeemer and Savior. He's the most beautiful. But you know what? so beautiful about heaven? Look at that list, verses 29 through 31. You won't find that up there. You won't find that up there. We're going to lay all that aside. Won't have to worry about that anymore. But the ones who are being filled with that lifestyle, as the wrath of God is poured out, on their soul. I can only imagine. I'm thankful tonight that I'm not flaunting some lifestyle in his face. But I am raising my hands toward heaven saying I'm unworthy to be called yours. But I'm thankful when I couldn't get to you, you came to me and you did something for me that nobody else could do. You redeemed my soul and I'm going to be with you not because of anything I've done but because of everything Jesus did. That is the message that we are to proclaim, the good news of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You see these little ones in here? You know that they can be wavered one way or the other. They can be easily influenced. We better get to influence them of the Lord Jesus Christ because if we don't do our part we're going to see another generation raise up with this list 
being turned over to a reprobate. Let's shine our lights for Jesus this week. And may much, may much be made of Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Well, let's close our service in a word of prayer. Brother Randy, you dismiss us in a word of prayer, brother. Rob, if you want to put on just some music for us, and if I can get a couple deacons to help pass out financial statements, that would be wonderful.